Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, Zenodo, which is a general purpose uh, repository developed by CERN under the OpenAir program. You may have heard of CERN about these uh, experiments with these large headphone colliders and the Higgs boson. And uh, so Zenodo uses part of uh, their uh, storage um, for um, saving data. And again, CERN uses uh, a big part of this. And the focus of this repository is, uh, of course, open data even though you can upload um, other things there. It was commissioned uh, by the European Commission uh, support to support open data policies and by providing um, yeah, a, a really easy, usable um, uh, repository. And uh, I'm going to show you really how to use this. Uh, let me just say um, that um, a few properties of Zenodo are that it's relatively safe uh, to use, so you can store really securely your research there. It's a, one of these trusted repositories uh, by OpenAir, by CERN, by several EU initiatives. It's their go-to place. Um, every upload is assigned a digital uh, objective identifier, so it makes them citable. There's no waiting time. You upload your uh, um, data and then within seconds uh, they are there. And um, so even like in a workshop or anything else, you can um, make things citable. You can decide whether you want to have things open or closed. Um, versioning is easily possible, so with each update on your data set, so you add more data, you, uh, for instance, you get a new version. And also, uh, of course, user stats, you want to know, are people looking um, at my data sets, are they downloading them, and um, also uh, GitHub integration. So um, how do we upload here? Well, it's fairly easy. First of all, you have to make an account and um, just with your email address. And I would also recommend linking your org ID profile to it so you can just have one sign on and you get there. Upload, very easy. You see here, you go to upload and this opens, uh, first of all, your own uploads that are there and to show you what you have. But then if nothing's there or you want to add to it, just choose a new upload. Okay, and it brings you to this window and um, you can then decide to upload your files here, either by drag and drop or you just deposit something there. So let's say I put a, a small data set up here um, and uh, you see it's uh, then ready and then I can uh, start the upload, which I won't do right now. Um, and um, next thing is communities. So um, let's say you are part of a larger community or I don't know, maybe your department, your uh, school that you're at um, is part of the Sinodo community. You can then type things in here and, and find it. Uh, you see um, also if you're part of a, of a grant, for instance, some output here from some projects, you can uh, assign uh, this. It's like a collection if you want so. So more interesting here are then the different data types because it's not only data that you can upload, but many other things. For instance, a publication. So let's say you have uh, an accepted manuscript um, and um, yeah, it's um, um, a yeah, closed publication. You can uh, upload the last accepted uh, Word uh, file here. Or if you ha uh, have the publication rights, you can self-publish your publication here. Um, uh, posters that you present at meetings, for instance, always a great way to create a record um, to share with others, but also for your own record to show that you were productive and not just have an abstract that you submitted to a meeting, but what the actual poster looked like. 
any presentation that, that you uh, ever gave, you can upload here. Uh, data sets, images you see uh, from audio, video files, even if you present a lesson uh, the, um, at a lecture, um, you can have this here, uh, software, but also description of physical objects, workflows, and anything digital that you want to share with the world, that um, you can do this here. So you have to assign next basic information. Um, the first part uh, is the digital object identifier. In most cases, you don't have to add anything because uh, um, Zenodo does it for you. Um, unless you have already, let's say, um, a data set referenced by your publisher. and But your publisher is not so well known and you are afraid that your data set is not, not visible through this. Uh, and it has its own a DOI, then you can say like, okay, here uh, is this original DOI. You don't need to upload things again, but it's just uh, links to it uh, um, through um, Zenodo. Interesting here is reserved DOI. This is of relevance because um, often we um, collect data sets or we uh, get them ready uh, and want to publish them alongside with our paper and so it's always the question well i need a dui for that paper but uh, i don't want uh, this to be accessible how can i assure this but i don't want to forget to put this in the paper uh, or if um, i had this happen also that um, people forgot basically this in the um, um, when the um, proofs came back and had just a private uh, access to it so it was not really open so um, best way is here to say click reserve DUI and then uh, it, uh, it is reserved and you already see what it is here and you can put this now everywhere nobody can access it it will say it's like okay there is a digital record for this but it's currently not accessible it's private and uh, also a publication date, but you can also change that later. Of course, the things uh, um, like title, authors that contributed to your data set, affiliations, and of course, uh, ORCID is always uh, nice to have. You can uh, add other authors and uh, um, very important uh, description of your data set uh, so that uh, that's important because uh, people need to know what it's about. So this can be something longer, this can be something shorter, but um, I would advise really a general description so people can understand this and anything else uh, that they need to know in an extra text file um, that describes your data set in detail. Um, well, if you have a certain version of your uh, data set, you can put this in here. Uh, language, add keywords, anything that you want to say. So, so uh, these are required entries and it has to do with the license and the access rights. So by default, uh, these data sets are open. So when you publish them, they're accessible to anyone, everyone. Um, but there may be reasons um, for you not to have it open. Um, for instance, you want to have an embargoed access. So embargoes means that um, the upload is there, but it will be made available to a later point in time. Um, so for instance, you still want to work on your data set and uh, potentially publish something else or do additional analyses um, but want to have this record there in your publication um, uh, now and um, so in, in a year or whatever your uh, embargo date is it's then accessible um, for everyone automatically goes to open restricted access so um, that means uh, that uh, you have to give permission to everyone um, who can access your data set. So this could be, for instance, clinical data, 
where uh, um, you want uh, that have like personalized information in there um, or any other reasons that you might have where you really want to control who has access to this data. So for instance, then you uh, um, describe basically the conditions that you want to fulfill. This could be a data transfer agreement. You could link out to anything or uh, questions you want somebody to answer. And then you would receive through the email address um, that is behind your Zenodo account and information if somebody um, has interest uh, in your data set and wants access and can get into a communication um, with uh, that person. So very elegant way to do that. Closed access, uh, so that's really just for, for yourself. Nobody else can, can access this and um, yeah, but that's not what we want. We want to have open access. So licenses, um, there are different licenses available. By default, it's the Creative Commons uh, attributions. I'm not going to go into details. Um, the International is really a good one to have. But uh, depending where you're from, if you type on here, you can also find like other licenses. Um, so for instance, here some uh, from Quebec. Um, but I don't know if this really applies to uh, you. Very important is the, the funding information because funders are now increasingly interested um, what happens in their projects and what uh, data are published or whether you promised in the proposal to publish certain data. Did you hold true to it? So funders want to know that. And so, uh, for instance, here you have the U, and then you just type in your program, for instance, IMI, and then you see it. these are all the programs that are currently um, uh, available. Then you can say, like, okay, this data set is part of this uh, particular grant. There are also, of course, other uh, um, uh, funders uh, available here. Um, also, uh, I think DFG is here, uh, there is uh, um, the NIH, so big, big funders um, are uh, also uh, using this um, as a repository. Um, okay, or if you have any other grant, you can also add multiple grants here. Okay, uh, one word uh, about uh, size limits. Um, I don't know whether it was in the, in the beginning um, mentioned somewhere here. So um, 50 gigabytes per data set um, um, and the file size limit is five uh, gigabyte. Um, usually if you um, have a larger data set, you um, should contact Zenodo and then get in contact with them and they um, might accommodate for this. So um, they're actually pretty open if you, uh, especially if you want to make it open later. So there are other identifiers uh, um, that I just want to talk about. Uh, some of them optional and recommended here. So um, for instance, let's say your, um, um, your data set was in relation to a publication and you want them to be cross-linked because in your uh, paper you cite this data set but anybody who finds your data set should also know about your paper um, so you do this by entering here the um, the dui of your paper then you can say like okay this is referenced by this is published published by this upload anything that applies here and then you say what it is uh, was this a book, a book section, journal article? So lots of options here. And um, add any other uh, related identifier. So um, there are um, also contributors. These are other people than authors, but you still want to acknowledge them in the process. So this could be a data curator that helped you, a project manager, a leader, um, a registration agency. So um, 
give credit here to contributors. It doesn't hurt and uh, makes everything transparent. Um, again, other references uh, that you want to cite here uh, along this data set. Let's say that, uh, that other papers uh, linked to this or it relates to other data sets you have published here. Um, just add them here and um, it's all in there. So let's say you said, okay, this was part of a journal publication, which is pretty often the case. It then gives you here the option to uh, specify the journal title, the volume issue and pages. And the same is true for all the other uh, outlets that we talked about. So if this was a conference, uh, a presentation, a poster, um, again, you can provide any information about um, the, um, the the conference here. Um, if you if this was part uh, of a book, like a, a book chapter, for instance, that that you published, um, all the uh, data that apply here, uh, or thesis or subjects. Okay, so we are here at the, at a place where you then can say like I want to save this, I want to publish. I can't save it because I haven't provided all the necessary information yet. So. Um, it, it's only possible once you applied um, everything. And yeah, then you can save it and uh, publish things later. And here you have your DUI that you can already start to use. Okay.